To demonize and scapegoat immigrants is one of the oldest and most effective political ploys in the political book. You will always find a very loud group of people who are, who are telling you to look at the immigrants, to look at the newcomers and blame them for the problems that you have. Unfortunately, I see some of this in the comments on my videos. Whenever I make videos about some of the challenges that we as black people have in this country, oh no, no, we're not black people, we're black African or we're black Caribbean or we're Jamaican or we're Ugandan or we're Ghanaian or we're Nigerian, we're doing fine. It's all these other people who are doing not very good. It's a refuge for those who want to try and pretend that we don't actually have the problems that we have. Every time I break it down and I look at specific ethnicities, subgroups within the black group, I find that we face pretty much all of the same problems to different degrees. But generally speaking, every single black subgroup faces the same kind of problems, generally speaking, doing worse than most other ethnic groups. But one of the recent things that start to come up in some of the comments is to say that it's immigration, it's newer immigrants that are causing the problems for us older immigrants who've been here for 40, 50 years and, you know, or, or descendants of those who came in the Windrush era, let's just say. So I want to use this video to disabuse us of that notion. I'm going to look at some data and I'm going to I'm going to show you that according to some data at least the, the, the data that I've been able to uncover black people in this country place more of a burden on the public purse the public coffers you find that black people who have been here longer are more of a burden on the state than our black people who came came over black people or white people, I'm talking about Eastern European people, who have come here more recently. So that's gonna be my aim in this video. Hope you enjoy it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and let's get into this. So let's look first at social housing. And right at the top there, you can see that black people are by far the most likely to be living in social housing. 44% of black people live in social housing. Nearly half of all black people in the UK live in social housing. How does that compare with white other? White other, I'm gonna be focusing white on white other quite a bit here because white other is, in my opinion, a good proxy for Eastern European immigrants. When you look at the census of 2021, about half of those people who ticked white other as their ethnic designation wrote in that they were from either Romania or Poland. And you find there, what percentage of those live in social housing? 19%. That is less than half of the, the rate for black people. As you can see from this chart, it shows you each ethnic group and it shows you what percentage of new social housing lets go to each of those ethnic groups. And what you see there, I want to zero in there on the on the black Africans and the black Caribbeans. You'll see there 3.9% of new social housing lettings went to black African people. That compares to 2.5% of the overall population of the UK made up of black African people. But look at the black Caribbean percentage there. 1.9% of new social housing lettings went to black Caribbean people. Black Caribbean people make up 1% of the overall population. The rate of new social housing lettings going to black Caribbeans is twice that that you would expect if it was based on the overall population. And then what about our Eastern European brothers and sisters? We can see here that the percentage of social housing lets, new social housing lettings that went to white other was 4.6%. That is lower than their overall rate in the population as a whole, which is 6.2%. So on this marker here, it shows us, it confirms that white other people, meaning generally speaking, those are gonna be fairly recent Eastern European immigrants, place less of a burden on social housing than do black people. Whether you're talking about black African people or whether you're talking about about black Caribbean people. And I need to say here as well, living in social housing is nothing to be sh ashamed of. It's a brilliant and beautiful thing that a country can provide social housing because I think it's important that housing can be as much as possible removed from the, the capitalist sphere, if you like, and people are able to have a roof over their head at an affordable price because in my opinion that is a human right that is not a privilege to be able to live with a roof over your head but the point is that if you're going to argue that oh immigrants are putting more of a pressure on our social services and in you know, our public coffers well us as black people particularly those who have been here for many many decades are in no position to be making any such claims. All right, so what about unemployment? This data here taken from the census of 2021 shows us that the unemployment rate for black Caribbean people was 8%, that for black African and also for black other people was 9%. The unemployment rate amongst black people, black African people, black Caribbean people, black other people was nearly double that for white other people. So again, you can't be turning around and saying, oh, these, these people are coming in and they're not working and they're claiming benefits, da, 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 da. 
amongst black people here, whether black Caribbean or black African or black other, the unemployment rate is higher, much higher than that of white other people. And the difference in unemployment rate between black African people, i.e. newer immigrants, generally speaking, and black Caribbean people, i.e. older immigrants, if you like, more settled immigrants, or people who've been born and raised here more so, the unemployment rate is basically the same. There's no room to be trying to say, oh, we're all right. It's these other black people. They're the ones who are not working. That won't work. The last data points I want to look at relate to the criminal justice system. Black people make up a much higher proportion of the prison population compared to our percentage in the overall population. This table, for example, shows us that the blue, the light blue box there, that's black people. We make up 4% of the population as per the census of 2021, but we make up a much higher proportion of those who are stopped and searched, arrested, prosecuted, convicted, cust who receive custodial sentences, etc. And we make up 12% of the overall prison population. That's three times our portion of the overall population as a whole. And the disparity is much worse, shocking worse when it comes to children in prison. You see here that ch black children make up 5% of the overall national population of children in the UK and yet they make up far, high, far higher proportions of those who are arrested, prosecuted, etc. And also they make up 30%. I mean this is... I didn't actually know this was it was this bad. Black children make up 30% of all children in the prisons. I don't know if you know this but it costs something like £50,000 per year to keep somebody in prison. So just on a real cold cost benefit analysis, you know, financial analysis, black people unfortunately are putting a huge burden on public coffers because so many of us are in prison. And again, people being put in prison are the result of a complex range of factors, social factors, economic factors, cultural factors. A lot of it is gonna be down to racism within the criminal justice system, but a lot of it is also gonna be due to social factors, which, I believe we as black people have some control over some of these social factors. But can we see if there's any differences based on, you know, whether, the, whether these people are black African or black Caribbean? In that same report, there are figures that show all of those people who were sentenced at a magistrate's court or a crown court between 2018 and 2022. And here we can see that black Africans made up 3% of those sentenced. Black Caribbean people also made up 3% of all of those sentenced in that time period. However, black African people make up 2.5% of the overall population. So while there was a bit of a disparity there, it's only, a, it's only about 20% higher. When you look at black Caribbean people, they made up 3% of those who received custodial sentences in that time period. They only make up 1% of the national population. And then you look at white other. Again, white other, I'm using that as a proxy for Eastern Europeans. What percentage of the overall population of people who were sentenced to custodial sentences? How many of those were white other? 6%. And what does that mean? That means that black Caribbean people are much more likely to, to end up being given a custodial sentence and thus end up in prison than are either black African people, i.e. newer immigrants, or white other people, again, i.e. newer immigrants. And again, let me just be really clear. This is not, this is not to scapegoat or demonize prisoners any more than it is to scapegoat or dehumanize people who live in social housing or who are unemployed. These are social issues that have complex causes. But my point is that if you are going to live in a glass house, you cannot throw stones. If you're a black person, if you're a black Caribbean person and you think, ah, oh, it's all these Africans coming here and causing problems in our communities and sponging off the state and all this sort of stuff, I'm afraid you cannot say that. You need to look in the mirror. You know, take the plank out of your own eye before you try and take the speck out of somebody else's eye, as that proverb goes. And it's up to us to not try and blame some other group, blame this other, oh, it's those people. No, forget blaming anybody else for our issues. It starts with you, one. It starts with you, it starts with your family, it starts with your friends, it starts with your children, it starts with your parents.